Hello, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're here to review A Short Hike. Now I know, I know, the game has been out on the Switch for two years, but we just never got around to review it here on the channel, and with the newly released physical version via Super Rare Games, I thought there was no better time to do it than now. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Why do we play games? Exploration would seem to be the watchword, the cataclyst of every element of the most diverse and interesting form of entertainment there is. It doesn't matter what you're exploring, all that matters is that it's happening. In the most traditional sense, you're exploring an unfamiliar, possibly mystical locale. On a less narrative level, you're exploring your own ability, your skill. You're exploring the tactics of your opponent, exploring the art funneled into a game by its talented creators. That is what gaming is. Exploration. Forgive the prestigious first paragraph there. Some games just inspire such reflection on what this alleged art form is all about. What we get out of gaming, regardless of genres, platforms, styles, budgets and controls. Whatever this elusive universal experience is, a short hike has it in spades. You play as Claire, a little bird on holiday in a place called Hawk Peak. In a quest to find a mobile phone signal, she must reach higher ground. So you do. But just like life, there are plenty of distractions on the way. Hawk Peak is a small contained compact place, but it's rich with things to do, all of which are really organic in their presentation. Climbing the mountain itself is the primary goal, portrayed as a semi-isometric 3D platformer of sorts where your objective of reaching the summit is hindered by Claire's lack of flight ability and energy, a resource increased by finding or buying golden feathers, each one allowing you to perform an additional jump in the air as well as climb up steep surfaces for longer. Think Breath of the Wild stamina system but more concise. On the route to acquiring said feathers though are the distractions as we mentioned. Fellow hikers, holiday goers, and native mail around the island going about their business. Chatting with them triggers breezy, likeable dialogue that's neither bogged down with exposition nor so quirky it obfuscates crucial information. You'll be able to meet and race against marathon runners, grab a fishing rod, take in a quick game of stick volleyball, trade a kid's toy shovel for a real one, and dig up coins and treasures with it. Every action contributes marvelously towards your overall goals. You'll come up against walls in your progress as you play, often literally a wall you're not able to climb, but brilliantly your options on how to circumvent this are completely free and open. Even in the early game you're able to explore a sizable chunk of the island. That first golden feather at the visitor center is signposted to some extent, but we went off exploring beforehand, managing to find some seashells, dig up some treasure and even stumbling across a feather that made us feel like we'd broken the game. Only, of course, its discovery was entirely within the game's parameters. That's another thing this game excels at, making you feel like you're pushing its limits, getting one over on it, even when, of course, you're not. As you ascend higher and higher, you'll find new tweaks to the established controls and systems, gameplay variation without the frustration of a brand new mechanic at the 11th hour. The difficulty increases, but while the terrain is hostile, the game certainly isn't. Yes, you can tumble down the mountain and lose some progress, it'll never take you long to get back to where you were, but in the process of doing so, you might find yourself in a new area full of stuff to see and do, or even just an old area from a new angle. A sudden reminder that, hey, you can make that jump now. Or if you climb back up even halfway, you can then glide to that previously unreachable seashell. And that gives you enough to take back to the kid who wants them. But on the way there, you realize that you didn't win that race yet. But in the passing, you acquired enough coins for another feather, which means you can get back up the mountain quicker and easier, which... and so on. It's that sort of game. A constantly giving, rewarding little box of joys. Remember how Celeste Mountain was a metaphor? A Short Hikes is a little less on the nose, a game whose journey has whatever meaning and renaissance you choose to pour into it. It's a story as freeform as its gameplay, a perfect synergy of everything video games do well. 
and we haven't even mentioned the beautiful pixelated graphics or the evocative soundtrack. When everything complements everything ever so brilliantly, you barely even notice them. That's what it means to be a truly complete game. Nonetheless, we'll give them some time in the sun. This game is just beautiful to look at. It's visually more complex than it may seem, managing to marry its attractive and unique visuals with the similarly undulating box of trade it's portraying. The music too is extremely fitting, pastoral when it needs to, triumphant when you earn that triumph. Naturally, the whole thing's at 60 frames per second, and the controls are smoother than butter. If we had to dig for any real criticisms, we could argue that a short hike is too, well, short. But to do that, we would miss the point. Making a beeline for the summit and ignoring the wealth of wonderful distractions, secrets and easter eggs is forcing the game into a round hole when it's very much a square peg. A straight shot to the summit will take you an hour, tops, but it's a hike, not a sprint. Maybe the ability to switch our equip tool with the shoulder buttons would have been cool, but the game never requires any kind of rapid flickering between your inventory, so it's almost entirely moot. A game where we need to really dig for anything at all to complain about, you love to see it. In conclusion, A Short Hike is a fat-free experience from top to bottom. It's the kind of game that makes us just <sighs> sigh with happiness when we recall our time with it, and even having played it through its ostensible conclusion multiple times, we know for a fact that there are still things to do and see on that mountain. What we have here is something of an apotheosis, a milestone in indie games akin to Cave Story or Splunky. The very best bits of multiple game genres, stripped of all padding and bloat, mixed perfectly into a delicious video game stew that only gets richer and richer the more you play it. An exploration in every sense of the word. A short hike is cute without being twee, challenging without being obnoxious, and emotional without being cloying. A landmark game for all ages, don't miss this one. We here at Nintendo Life give a short hike on the Nintendo Switch a 10 out of 10. And now that we've reached the end of the review, it's time for Felix's personal thoughts. This game is very special to me. I mean, there was a reason why I bought the Collector's Edition two years after it came out on Switch. It's the kind of game that maybe from the outside looks a bit, ah, that doesn't look very fun to do, you're just running around talking with people on this island, but I don't know how to describe it. I feel like Stuart did a really good job in trying to really show what's so special about this game, because man is this game just a really unique experience. I love the fact that you can just sit down and complete it in one sitting, you don't need to like commit to it, you can just try it out. It's not often in today's standard that games are really short, so it's just a really nice change of pace. You can really feel all the passion from the creator of this game. And just before I finish up, I want to mention the music, like just really highlight how much the music does for this game. Sure, the game is fantastic, but when I was playing, I realized, huh, if the music wasn't here, would this be as fun? And I came to the conclusion that, well, I don't think so. This game has loads of different songs that perfectly encapsulate at what point you are in your journey. It has different variations, so when you're at one part of the map, it plays maybe the percussion and strings, and then the other, it cuts out the strings and replaces them with accordion. Similarly, when you're flying, you get this almost Studio Ghibli-esque vibe, and it's just absolutely marvelous. But that was enough of me just gushing about this game. Please try it out if you haven't already. It's an experience like no other. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Felix from Nintendo Life, out.